So he, he lays out this red carpet and our whole beer league team's there. And we have like the whole, like the CVC sweat, or the, the CVC, uh, you know, sweat the towels. Towel? Yeah, oh, the towel. And, and he's doing, you know, iPhone interviews uh, in the hallway there while we're watching Mr. Hockey, the Gordy House story. And uh, we just had a real fun time with that. Got banged up, watched the premiere. And then the next day, Jamie, who plays the ginger in the show, goes, you should bring the hockey players out for a, a, a letter candy skit. So we link up on the Sunday and do a, a read of this like two page skit that he'd written just sort of off the, off the cuff, drive out to Ladner and shoot this letter Kenny skit with the hockey players in it. It's like a, you know, two minute YouTube video. And about a month and a half later, Jared calls us both and says, Hey, there's like over a million hits on this video. I think this is, this is a go for a series boys. Like this looks really good. So he shops it out to, to bell and bell links them up with new metric media and crave tv and uh and we're just hoping for like maybe maybe a chance to shoot a a pilot you know we're not really thinking much of it but he he calls us for dinner one night and uh he goes well boys we didn't we didn't get the pilot but we got six episodes we're flying out to Sudbury (laughs) flying out to Sudbury next week and you guys are the hockey players. And I, di- I didn't know this at the time, but he went to bat for us. Like, we'd only done the, the one movie, really. And Bell wanted to audition, like, well-known actors to play the hockey players. And Jared goes, if I'm doing it, I'm doing it with the squad that I started with. I'm bringing the boys with me. Loyal. So, yeah, loyal. Like, to a, a, like a dog. Like, like an absolute fucking beauty, buddy. Like a, a, a legend. So, so yeah, we, we buzz out to, to Sudbury and shoot season one and, Fuck, man, we had so much fun, and, and sort of the rest is history. You know, it really it caught fire. Um, remembering lines, like is that, or are you guys a little bit more ad lib, uh, very similar to curb your enthusiasm? I mean, that that was honestly probably the the biggest uh, sort of like pressure that Hersey and I put on ourselves because knowing knowing that element of it, the fact that he really went to bat for us, like when we got out there, so the whole like every script you see is almost written like 99 percent of what you see or hear is written in the script the, there's a little tiny bit of ad-libbing that we end up doing but it's usually at the end of a scene and it's usually like after all the stuff is has been filmed because in a show that quick pace right like if you miss a line or you ad-lib a line you can throw the whole scene off right because there's so many words there's so many sentences coming in so fast from so many different characters that there's not much time to, to ad lib. So that first season, like I'm not exaggerating when I say eight hours a night, Andrew and I would run those scenes. Like we'd, we'd work and work and work. Cause our whole thing was like, we got this one chance, you know, if we, if we do good by, by Jared and bell, then maybe we'll get a chance to do more of it. So I don't think there's anything in my life I've ever, you know, prepared more for. And then when you, when you've got all that stuff, locked in and 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 memorized then you can go into it and sort of have fun with it but it's like if you're a little bit unsure then you're thinking about it then you're thinking about what you're saying so um yeah man that's i think where we earned our paychecks was just doing the work before we got on set you know to memorize and and it goes back to the hockey thing and i tell people i'm always thankful for like growing up in that environment because you're held accountable for even from a young age right and yeah you and then you talked about the the hard work that your old man instilled in you as well and you're thinking in this situation, it's very similar to a hockey team because, like, this guy went to bat for you, similar like to maybe your coach picking for the team. Yeah. And you you put in that extra work just to ensure that you were going to provide. And, and, dude, you've obviously worked your balls off to be where you are. So when you when you do this first season of Letter Kenny, and I, I, I'd hope you'd be able to maybe explain more of, of what it's actually about and maybe the different, uh, the different characters in the show that are very important – and did you guys expect for it to blow up as much of it as it did? Yeah, I, I mean, like, like you said, you know, it's a, a huge part of the success, I think, comes from where everyone was before the show started. You know, we, for the most part, like of the top cast, I think seven of us all played at least junior hockey. So we all sort of had that, that makeup in us, you know. And then as far as the characters are concerned, again, we're all from small towns. Like I'm from Fort St. James, BC, bumfuck nowhere, north of Prince George. Uh, Hersey's from Kingston, Ontario. Uh, Kiso's from uh, Listowel. Jamie's from, uh, he's from the island. He's from a little town out there. And basically the the tribes in the show are, are people that we all 
we all knew growing up, you know, like from those small towns, you got the, you got the Hicks, the skids, the hockey players, the natives, uh, the, the hardcore Christians or the, uh, the Mennonites. And uh, I mean, so much of that just comes from reality. And I think that's a, that's a huge reason why the show um, resonates with people is because it feels like everyone kind of knows someone from Letterkenny, you know? 